Amen. James 5 and 7 says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband then waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. Everybody say precious. Precious. And have long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Be also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draw nigh. Amen. Let's pray, Jesus. We thank you for your precious word, God. I pray for an anointing on my lips, on my mind, on my heart. But open the ears and the hearts of the hearers, God, that this word could get into their minds and spirits. Strengthen them today. Help them today, God. Help us, Lord, to feel something in the spirit today that changes the direction of our life. I pray answers are given today. Lord, direction is given today. Doors are open. Walls are broken down. God, I pray help us. To serve you better in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. And turn to your neighbor and say, you are precious. You are precious. <laughs> Some of you are being sarcastic, but y'all are precious. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. Y'all be nice now. Amen. There is a God who created all of us. His name is revealed to us as Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. And he, Jesus, had purchased us with his blood. Everybody say, his blood. His, his blood. blood. We are precious, precious. to God. That's right. I knew she's going to have to do, you know, y'all anyway, are precious. But to God, we are precious. I, I looked the definition of that word up and it means of great value of great value so my grandbabies are precious to me and I have great value for them your children in this church are precious to me and they have great value to me uh -huh. yes. and so um, I, I love my old boss his name is Roger you might watch this but uh, he would say things like you know Matt we uh we put up with you so we can fellowship with your precious wife. <laughs> and I just say, well, thank you. I appreciate that. So, but sometimes you can't see the value that God puts on us. And we have this habit of valuing each other. We look at somebody and, and think, well, you know, they're kind of short. And, I think they're around as they are tall and you know they're not articulate and you know I don't know if they even got a car and I don't know if they work and we start we start taking our measuring stick out and we begin to measure people but God does not look at man as flesh Come on. Uh, I, I, I've got bad news and good news and I'm going to give you the bad news first you don't get better with age. That's right. I know that's a reality some of you are starting to step into. You hit that 30 mark and thought, oh, I'm in good shape. You went to bend over one day. And, <laughs> and when you're 40, it gets better. You can't get up and you're yelling, help, somebody get me. <laughs> and when you're 50, it, it takes a crowd. And so... My point is, you're not getting better with this body. It's getting worse. But as long as you're serving God, in His eyes, Amen. your value keeps going up and up and up. Because He doesn't look at you like man looks at you. We value what you can do. We value how you look. I don't care what anybody says. Everybody in this world, you get on TV. They don't put ugly people on TV. They're not trying to interview ugly people. They're trying to get the, the beautiful people. They the, all, the, all the telecasters and newscasters and all these sports. Man, their faces are, are stressed so tight. I, I, I look some of the age of some of these people up. And they're older than me. This is what 55 looks like, okay? Woo! I'm a good example of 55. And Cecil, you're wearing 70, almost 76 really well. <laughs> But you ain't caught up with him over there in the corner. He looks great for his age. He's about to be 80, right? Mm. Let me tell you something. God values us 
from his perspective. Amen. Because this old clay that's getting old in his mind is that's what this clay means nothing to God because God can make you a new body. Yeah. That's his plan. So he's he's looking for things that are precious to him. And when he sees somebody that has bowed their knee and humbled themselves and begin to call on his name, and we bury them in the waters back there in Jesus' name, and then he fills them with their spirit. In in his eyes, they're precious. Uh -huh. They're precious. First Corinthians six nineteen says, "What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price." You are bought with a price. Let me tell you something. How many bought a car with your money? How many bought a piece of land with your money? Got a house on it. You, you, you purchased something that was yours with your money. Just let somebody fill with something that you, you buy. I, I don't mind giving somebody a ride in my car, but don't go over there and beat my car up. That's my car. I paid for it. And to me, as long as it's running, it's precious. That's right. Because this fat boy don't like to walk. That's right. <laughs> and the older you get, the more precious that car becomes. In God's eyes, he does not value you like we value each other. No. Come on. He's looking at what he's building in you. I know you got some wrinkles and maybe some gray hair. Maybe you're not as talented as the next. But he bought you with a price for a reason. Because when he looked at you, he saw value. Come on. Man. He saw something I want. I want that. And I'm willing to pay for it. You know what I love about God? He doesn't give us some fake relationship. He's not, he, in his mind, I bought you. Why? Because I love you. I love Nobody wanted you, but I wanted you. And you were in the you were bloody and open. And now I'm going to look at you. I wanted you. I bought you. Yes. You're mine. Say it the Lord. There's a whole difference between having a relationship with somebody where you're wondering, well, I don't know if I'm good enough. Well, I don't know if they're going to love me. That's not God's relationship. He bought you. He bought you. I'm not a slave to God, but I'm purchased by his blood. You know what that gives me? That gives me identity. What are you, Matt? I'm a child of a great king. I'm bought. Right. Somehow, some way, God looked down on my brokenness and says, I want you. And in my eyes, your life is precious to me. I'm good with that. I'm, I'm good with that. I, I don't mind being bought because in God's eyes, I'm precious. I'm precious. I know sometimes we, we, we use that word in a little <laughs> mocking sense. You see a little somebody be a little different. You're like, oh, they're just precious. <laughs> oh, she's just so precious. Bless your heart. But that's not how <laughs> hey, I'll put myself up for this. I'm prepared. You know what I'm saying? I got it in my nose. I'll see some else. I'll say this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, keep me hearing A's down. Bro. You hear that. <laughs> Listen. We are in the body of Christ purchased by the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says it's the precious blood of the Lamb. Because God, God considers himself valuable, but he's willing to sell himself on a cross so that he can buy something of great value. Oh, yes. I, I like that about God. I like that about God. You don't get it. You know what? You go where... Uh, some of you go sometime, uh, go down to Georgia, Atlanta. I don't know if there's if there's one in the upstate. I don't even think there's one in South Carolina at all. But walk into a Bentley car dealership and try to buy one off the floor. That's not how it works. You have to order that car. You've got to want that car. And you know what? When you get it all sorted out, they're going to show you what you're going to pay for that car. 
And when you buy that car, that's the one you park in the garage. Right? We're not taking that one to Walmart. <laughs> we may take that one to church, but we'll park it out there in the concrete with some cones around it. <laughs> because I got a lot invested in that. And some of you don't treat yourself very well. And God's saying, I bought that. Yes. That thing you're missing with, I bought that. Uh -huh. That thing you're, you're sitting with, I bought that. Yeah. It's not yours, it's mine. Yeah. I bought it. Good. Sometimes it's hard to understand the relationship we have with God. And, and sometimes we put God in, in, in that category of convenience. When it's convenient, I go to church. When it's convenient, I read my Bible. When it's convenient, I pray. When it's convenient. But that's not the relationship he has towards you. He's committed. When he spread those arms on a cross and blood flowed from his body. And when he looked up to heaven and said, Father, Father, forgive them. Or they know not what they do. He was there on the cross purchasing you with his blood just how you were. Uh -huh. mm. I, I'm going to get a little funny here and just, just work with me on this. But and, and, and we have some people in our church right now that are, that are dating. I'm not going to point out Trish and Alan. I won't point out Austin and but, you know, when you're dating, you don't show up to your date with your hair all out of whack and your face a mess and your teeth not brushed and your clothes dirty, do you? No. Oh, my. He does. He gets all the work together. The majority of them. There's always an anomaly. <laughs> but when you're going to meet your perspective love, you fix yourself up. Right. Let me tell you something. When we was on the boat, there was just me and her. My wife put clothes on, and she's modest from head to toe. Don't worry, she ain't showing no flesh. But she's godly modest. When we're on that boat, we're godly modest. We're a bunch of heathens, but we're godly modest. And let me tell you something. When she's walking down them hallways, the men were going, whoa. I'm like, that's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, you want something like this, you better take over pants. You better have a good job. <laughs> things like this don't come cheap. <laughs> the way God looks at things is you're his bride. You're not some cheap little something on the side. He's going to clothe you with his glory right. and his power right. and his majesty. <laughs> You're not just somebody, you're the child of a great king. You're not just somebody, you're the, you're the child of the God of heaven, the creator of all things. God bought you with his blood, not because you were good, not because you were beautiful, not because you had some style or some talent. No way. He bought you because when he saw you, you were precious. Yes. There was something you had. He saw value. Cecil, when you in that in those trenches in Vietnam and men were dying all over and bullets flying all over God had his hand on you. You know why? Because he saw some value. Amen. Hey, 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 that's my boy. He's precious. Hey, no, he ain't going back here. Not today. Amen. Amen. Bible says a thousand on my right hand and ten thousand on my left, but it doesn't come by me. Why? Because you are bought with a price. You are the bride of Christ. You are precious in his sight. There are things that we have to understand about God. And, and when he looks at you, he looks at you as, as not just a possession, not somebody that just, he's going to, you're not an automaton. He, he's not going to control you. But he, he puts it in you. He, he gives you the earnest uh, gift he can, his presence. And, and, and last Sunday we were praying around this altar and the spirit of God just filled this house and we were weeping and crying because you could just feel the power of God flowing. Hallelujah. You could just feel it. You, just, you didn't want to leave. You just wanted to soak it 
up. What was it? That was God just showing you this is just a little taste of what I got for my precious people. Oh, we're just warming up here because these are just a little touch. This, I'm just breezing by. But when you get to heaven and you stand in my presence, come on now. You will know that I've got something precious. I don't think we understand how God looks at us. We, 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 we self-deprecate. Does anyone know what that means? We make excuses and tear ourselves down to others. Well, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not. Friend, we all know what you're not. But somehow God saw something in you that you were. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Out of all the people out there that are walking the planet that don't even acknowledge God, somehow he whispered your name and your ears perked up. Somehow you responded oh, to a touch. Somehow you had a desire. Somehow you got to be there somehow. But before you were born, friend, he knew your name. He knew who you were. He, he saw your failures and still called you precious. He saw your weaknesses, your disasters, and still called you precious. He looked at you and said, someday I'm going to bring her out of that. I'm going to bring him out of that. And when people see me do it, they'll know there's a God. Amen. There's testimonies in this room. If I pass this microphone around and start letting people give their testimony what God has done for them, the things in their life that God has helped them overcome, the person they were, Ten years ago, and the person they are today, on, you, you wouldn't even know. Amen. There's people in this, this room that can show you pictures of who they were before, and you say, that can't be you. And you're bopping your head and say, yeah. Yep. And I came to an altar looking just like that. Yes. And somehow, I got down here, and I felt the presence of Come on, somebody. And he thought I was precious. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Good. We tear ourselves down and we, we say I'm not good enough. None of us are good enough. You're not going to get to a place in this life where you're good enough. That's why we need Jesus who is good. Uh -huh. We need Jesus. I need Jesus every day. Uh, Austin, I, I'm glad you called me in the morning because it may remind me I need Jesus. Yeah, during the day when I'm, I'm facing things I can't understand, I find some place in my office and we get to talk to God about it. Come on now. You know what? Because I'm precious in his, in his sight, I have his ear. Yeah. Let me tell you something about my, my grandbabies. And, and I'm telling you from a man's perspective. When my grandbabies are playing in the pool, you guys are over here watching me. Yeah. I'm listening with one ear to what you're saying. But my focus is on those babies in that pool. Uh -huh. and, and, and you may not realize it, but my muscles are tense and ready to go. And I'm watching there. And hey, they're having a good time and they're jumping. Every once in a while, I'll see one go down and he don't come up for a few seconds. And all of a sudden, you know why? Because I'm watching. They're precious to me. Yeah, I can't right. replace those. That's right. It's not like I go to Walmart and buy some new grandbabies. No, no, I've been tested in them. So I watch. When you're sleeping, God's watching. Yes. When you're getting up going to work, God's watching. When you're going down the road and there's a crash and cars go smashing that way and then something happens this way and you go down the middle, God's watching. That's right. It's not that he don't care about all the other souls. He does. God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But friend, those that call on his name that are marked by his spirit, well, they're precious. You can read Revelations. There's two harvests. The first one goes in with a sickle and he harvests the precious fruit of the earth. And the second one goes in and harvests the earth by judgment. Yes. Friend, we are that first one. I am a, a child of God. Amen. You are a child of God. And when God sees you, he sees something precious. Yes. I got value in that. You can go to Revelations and, and see where uh, the Bible's John is describing the city of gold. And he said, there's precious stones there. Stones of value. That same word 
that same Greek word that John used for precious stone, beryl, and diamonds, and all these different, I mean, just sapphires and rubies, all these brilliant, rare stones. God had that, they, uh, John used that same word, or Peter used that same word in the Greek, that same word toward you, precious. You're a diamond, you're a ruby, you're a sapphire to God. This is the thing about God. He can take your mess and turn it into something beautiful. Anybody been there? Yeah. Anybody been a mess? And then after after God gets done, you start getting on the right path and things in your life start settling out. And after a while, you look in the mirror and you don't realize who that is. Who is that person? Hallelujah. That's a precious child of God right there. Thank you, Jesus. And God's done great work. There's some things we got to do, though. We, we've got to focus I told you a little bit about who you are, and, and if you get your Bibles, turn with me at First John. And I want to read a few verses to you, and, because there's some things in here we need to understand. You're a child of God. Everybody say, "I'm a child of God." I'm, a child of God. I'm precious in His sight. Mm. There's some things God's going to ask for you. Not much. 1 John 2 and 7 says this, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Remember what I said about how we value each other? Friend, you need to change your thinking about who comes through the back door in there. I may, I know you don't like their cooking. You, you, you did it to, at the, at when we had potluck and what they made you didn't like. And I, I understand you don't like the color of their brand new car that you're jealous of. I understand they're better looking than you. They're thinner, taller. But friend, if you're in the light, you better love what God calls precious. Matter of fact, you better just find a way to embrace whoever God calls precious. Because if you're in the light, you can't hate your brother because then you're in darkness. Sometimes we wonder why we don't really get from God what we, we think we should have from God. Well, I see other people getting blessed and I see God take care of problems for other people. I see, I see things happen in their lives and I'm not sure why it's not happening in mine. But you need to look around and see how you're treating God's people. This isn't casual. This is who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm precious. I'm bought with a price. So I need to live in a way that glorifies God. And let other people know that they can live just like me. That's right. Just like me. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not unique. I'm made by God. Yeah. And you want to have my life and, and, my, and my job and where I live. You want to have all that stuff? Just seek his face. That's right. He's got more to come, friend. You just keep on coming and you keep on, you keep on committing. You keep on believing. You keep on walking and talking and doing what God asks you. And before you know it, you'll be where you never thought you could be. That's right. That's right. Amen. Like I never could own a home here. Y'all are owning a home. I never had a new car. There's a brand new. I never had a really good job. I've never been able to have a stable relationship with anybody. Bam! God give you a brand new family right here. Amen. I'll tell you what. My family, the closest people in my life, are not my blood. It's you folk right here. That's right. When I think of, I need to call somebody for help. It ain't my family. That's right. See, so I got a problem. I ain't got to work. Austin, I need a little help. Brother Anthony, I need something. Andrew, got a problem. Michael is giving. Why? Because we're family. That's right. That's right. We consider each other precious and not in that little snicker way. Amen. They're precious. When I see those little beautiful girls, Julie and Emma and Ilya and Elena, this down here praying and worshiping God, I'm praying to fences. God, put, put protection around them. God, do something in their life. They're precious to me. Precious. I call every one of you by name. Every morning. Every one of you by name. 
and I cover you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So don't worry if you forgot to pray. Just think in the back of your mind, there's somebody on this planet that thinks I'm precious. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. There you go. Thank you, Lord. This is, this how, this is how our, our mind needs to focus, and I'll explain it in a minute, but 1 John 2, 15, it's, it's some harsh words, and and John always says things with that word love, and you think, oh, he just lovey-dovey. John just lovey-dovey, and, and actually he's got an ax out, and he's swinging, laying there in these next three verses we're going to read. John 2, 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I can stay in the church until you guys tear me down in a casket and put me in the ground. And friend, I'll abide forever. Because I'm precious in his sight. And I, I didn't put it in my notes. I don't think. No. I meant to. So I was looking through it. And I was going to try to find it. But the Bible says, precious in the eyes of the Lord are the death of his saints. That's not morbid. That's God saying, I finally get what I bought. You, how many order something on Amazon? And you buy that mailbox. And FedEx truck from here. You get all excited. You get all excited. You know, buy. My wife's in there splitting the blinds. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just checking out the bills, honey. I'm an officer. <laughs> Upstairs in the kids' room, got them blinds on. <laughs> what are you doing in there? I'm just cleaning up after grandbabies. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I walk in the door after work at 12. Did you check the mail? No, but I will. Why? There's an anticipation. I ordered a little widget thing in case my own. I want to play with it. It's supposed to be coming, but I ain't here yet. And I'm getting a little anxious. Anybody been a little anxious? You ever been in, when there's a long church service and they have potluck, barbecue sitting next door and a preacher just going on and on and on and on. Oh my God. I can smell that through the walls. Some sister that's been over there working with it comes into the sanctuary and that cologne of smoked wood is on her. And you're like, all of a sudden you think, my God, I'm fixing to get anxious up in here. God's in heaven. And Michael, that angel got that, or Gabriel got that trumpet. He's up there. Now? No. No, I'll tell you what. Now? I, 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 wanted to, I want you to, but not yet. Now? No, just hang tight, pal. I'm as anxious as you are, but the time's getting close. The Lord's strong nigh. We can see what's happening. It's days and hours and minutes for us. But it's a blink of an eye for God. And friend, one of these minutes, we might just be sitting in a church service like this. And it won't be some trumpet from a distance that we can't hardly hear. It's going to blare so loud, we won't know in a heart. There's going to be some kind of ignition in our heart. we got to know that that's the trump of God. Come on, God. And in the twinkling of an eye, bam. See, so my hearing aid is going to be left in that seat. Anyway. Next, the next poor guy coming to the church is going to have a nice pair of hearing aids. But I'm not going to be here. Because the sickle has gone into the earth and harvested out all the precious, <laughs> precious fruit of the earth that God bought for the promise he's on the road. you got to remember who you are. You're not just a person on this planet. If you have his name on your life. I've been buried in the name of Jesus. I feel with the spirit of God. I'm literally, as the Bible says, the temple of the Holy Ghost. I just read it to you. When God looks down on the earth, he sees a lot of people that he'd love to work with. But they're not giving him the time of day. And then all of a sudden he sees you. That's right. And his eye is fixed. You read Psalms 18 if you ever get frustrated like you. I can't reach God. I'm struggling. And you're going to read David. He's going to tell you about all these things that were happening to him. All these problems. And then you'll get about to the 20-something verse. And you'll hear And all of a sudden, 
And David said, I cried unto the Lord. And my voice went up into the temple, even into his ears. Why? Because you always hear the cry of your child. Right. Always. Come play something. I've told this story before. I'm going to tell it again. You, you'll probably hear it 400 times over the years. But I was at a friend's house and, and we were having a Bill uh, Menzer's cardiac baked potato salad. A little pot like, bowl like this, had 18 eggs and two or three pounds of bacon, jar of mayonnaise, cheese, pickles, and a few potatoes, what we call potato salad. And I had spooned a big old slab of it on a plate. And we had some grilled chicken, and some salad, all this good stuff on this plate. And I had just sat down in their little kitchen area and a few pictures of the stove and everything's over here. It's just a little bitty thing, maybe 12 by 12 or even smaller. You've got the kitchen table and the exits over there. And Bill's here and Kim's here. My wife's at the end. And, and we're just sitting because the table's against the wall. We're just sitting in the U. And all of a sudden, you know, kids are out there screaming and hollering. My, my kids make noise. How many know that your kids just make noise when they're playing? But all of a sudden, I heard that noise. And my daughter, she lit me up. I heard a cry. And I said, in my mind, wait a minute, she's not playing. It was that, it was that tenor of her voice. And I sprinted up and knocked Bill over and pushed him out of the way. And I got out the door and went through the screen door and jumped over the balcony to the ground and looked over and blood was squirting out between my little girl's eyes, five years old. She had fell and hit a boat barrel right on the edge and cut her forehead open and under her eye and her face was just covered in blood. And I snatched her up and covered all those little holes. And I wrapped her up in my arms. And I said, get in the car, take me to the hospital. And I, I sat there like this, holding her. And I did not leave her side or let go of her until we got her home and put her in bed. Ten hours at the hospital. I was in the room with the x-rays. I watched them stitch her, her forehead back together. Everything, I was there. Because when my child cries, something here goes, oh. We've got to respond. You are precious to God. Let's do it. Your voice carries weight in heaven. When you cry out to God, Andrew, when you cry out to God, God's ears are tuned to your cry. And let me tell you something about God. You, you want God to, to boil down fire and crack the sky open and wipe everything away. You think that's how you want it done. But God's in the background fixing your problem. And you just wake up and it's done. I don't know when he did it. I don't know how he did it. I don't know where he did it. But all of a sudden, it's just done. Because you're precious to God. And when you cry, God answers. Yes. Your voice carries weight in heaven. Your voice, your cry out to God moves heaven. Read Psalm 18. Just read it. You'll realize the voice of the child of the king moves heaven. Why don't you come on down here. Just gather around this altar. And just, just if it ain't, if, it, if you're not crying out to God for you, if you've got a family member, a, a daughter, a son, a sister, brother, a, a mom or a dad, somebody that's, that's needs prayer, just, just begin to cry out to God. Lift that name up to the King, and with your own voice, call out to God, because God's hearing what you say. Come on, let's let's cry out together, Jesus. Oh.